It is June 30th, 2019, and welcome to another Brooklyn Baritone Podcast. Hey everyone, this is Corey Ash from the Brooklyn Baritone Podcast. Got a question for you. What are you afraid of? Why are you scared of what you're scared of? Fear is a major thing that affects a lot of people. Fear, it, it holds you back. It freezes you in place. It causes people to not do things that they probably should do. Uh, of course, I'm going to share experiences, talk about how we shouldn't allow these things to hold us back with what we need to do. And of course, my own experiences on top of, we got some statistics that I went looking on the web for. Uh, Fear and phobias, there's like a never ending supply seemingly for uh, things that people are scared of. Uh, You know, different types of concerns, different types of issues, different types of uh, whatever it is. There's so much things that people are scared of. Um, some may be silly, some may be legit, but we're going to go over top 10 overall fears. And there's so much out there, so much sites and sources. Uh, I just basically went with the most recent one. Uh, some people will agree with these or not. Well, anyways, this first one is from learningmind.com is learning-mind.com. This is a uh, overall fears, I guess, for everyone in 2018. Uh, number 10, it's getting old. Number nine, getting poisoned. Number eight, being a coward. Number seven, germophobia. Number six, intimacy. Number five, going crazy. Four, Four is is a big one. Rats, cockroaches, snakes, airplanes, snakes on a plane, monsters, demons, mirrors, high heels, and it says etc. So it's just, I guess, a lot of uh, kind of common things and kind of weird things to be scared of. Uh, Sure, I'm not too sure what the high heels. Probably if you had a bad experience with a dominatrix or something. I don't know. All right. Number three, glossophobia and agoraphobia phobia glossophobia is public speaking fear of that and agoraphobia fear of open spaces uh number two death i guess is high enough and number one loneliness Uh, those are some serious ones there Uh, death and loneliness um death is inevitable gotta learn how to try and combat that but we understand why Uh, people don't want to deal with with death um you know like i'm gonna look go look at getting old Getting old, I can understand it's it's inevitable. Uh, I'm going to talk about with that and combine it with death because these are things that's going to happen is how how the world is right now. Most things, everything has an expiration date. And getting old and death is something that's going to happen. It all depends on how you go out, you know, when you die and when you get old. How are you going to get old? Are you, are you treating your body properly right now? Because we do have control to a degree of how things happen, even though we have no control, uh, you know, if it'll happen, when it'll happen. You, you want to be healthy. You want to be happy. You don't want to, you know, have the mindset that we're going to die anyways and just do what you want to do and abuse your body. And then when you're a ripe old age or later on in life, you're suffering. You don't want to do that. You, you At least you're going to die. Be healthy, as as healthy and proper as possible. Everything's in its place. Uh, same thing with getting old. You don't want to have the young you setting up the old you for failure. Now, when you're older, now you're like, oh, man, I should have taken better care of myself. Should I have had a better diet? I should have went to the doctor when I was supposed to. I should have went out to my dreams, you know, yada, 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 all that stuff. Okay, all the other things in between, uh, it varies between people. Uh, but undoubtedly, these are things that cause people to hold back. These are things that cause people to lose sleep. These things cause people to have stress. These, of course, are things that will cause you to not have an optimal life, a happy happy life. It will cause you to be miserable in some points, and you're kind of stealing your life force or allowing these things to steal your life force or your happiness and your progression from you. 
We don't need that. We already have so much things against us where we have these things in us, but we have so much strength that's inside of us to overcome a lot of things. Some people, they actually do overcome their fears. And some people, they just become a prisoner. Or some people use that as a point of caution just to make sure that they don't go past a certain point, which that's, it's not a bad thing to, to have that. All right, so I'm going to fine tune it a little bit more uh, with another 10. I tell you, fear is a big thing, and I kind of had to whittle it down because there were so much factors, so much phobia, so much concerns and things. Yeah, I'd be here until next week speaking on all the sites that are, that are out there. Uh, this one is from the Chapman University at www.chapman.edu. All right, I guess number one for them, starting from one, is for Americans. I'm sorry. This is a fear that Americans have in 2018. Corrupt government officials. Number two, pollutions of oceans, rivers, and lakes. Number three, pollution of drinking water. Number four, not having enough money for the future. Number five, loved ones becoming ill. Number six, segues loved ones dying number seven air pollution number eight extinction of plants and animals number f nine global warming and climate change number 10 high <laughs> medical bills that's definitely an american worry i know there are many other countries that don't have the resources that are doing way worse than us way worse than you that would love to have a fraction of what you have and a fraction of what many people complain about other people will are more than willing to trade over a whole life of servitude to have it just to have a portion of what we have what we complain about that term first world problems you know so a lot of a lot of fears are things that you know we just make up ourselves a lot of fears are things that we can control now the first list i went through i can understand those but this list from Chapman.edu, top 10 fears of Americans for 2019. I'm not too sure what the control group was, but this is what's listed. And I could see that definitely in this country with the many concerns, a lot of politically, a lot of economic, socioeconomic culture and structure that we're in right now. I could definitely see why these are a concern. Now, corrupt government officials, well, these are the people that are supposed to be working for the people, but... History has it, and what's usually shown in the mainstream is that these people don't have the average person's interest in their in their own interest. You know, uh, pollution of oceans, water, drinking water, that's something that will definitely be detrimental to your health. Uh, not having enough money for the future, loved ones becoming ill. The, the, these issues of fear for Americans in 2018 are actually more controllable. I mean, fear is definitely something that's just in you that you have to manage. The problem is people let these factors manage them. These things that Americans fear that I just went down, these are things that people can actually control if they garner enough proper willpower to unify and make sure these things don't happen, to make sure Everyone is held accountable. Corrupt government officials, they're running rampant because enough people aren't holding these people accountable and flushing them out. Pollution of air, water, and everything, well, pollution will just happen on its own. It's a definite product of how we live, how we treat the environment. We don't have proper dominion. We look for domination. Domination, one of my past podcasts, I describe as a perversion or abuse, abusive form of dominion. Dominion means you have responsibility for everything you survey. That means everything and everyone. You make sure that everything and everyone is in the best shape it possibly can. Sign of true leadership. Not having enough money for the future. We all could definitely be better in handling our finances and not acting so disposable or responsible. That's one part of it. But also the second part of it is again, holding the people who are, who are in place to make sure that the economy is proper, that the division of wealth, monetary wealth, resources 
are spread out properly through everyone. Again, holding people accountable to make sure everything is done proper for everyone's best interest. Uh, loved ones becoming ill, you know, you could hopefully make sure that they live a proper life, eat the proper things, you know, lifestyle, diet yeah, are definite contributing factors to people going ill because most of the diseases is based on diet and our environments and what we have around us. So these are things, again, that can be controlled by people. Extinction of plants and animals, same thing as dominion, having more care to make sure things are living the best way. Animals aren't abused. The environment's not abused. You know, plants as well, global warming. Uh, there's certain things that's, you know, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole with uh, about climate change. Uh, probably not what you think is so much other factors that most of us don't know of. We don't have that proper knowledge of, again, because we're not, we're not, we're not there, uh, collect, collectively, mentally to understand so much things. Many people do have an idea. Others don't, but to a degree, yes, it all depends on how much resources what we are taxing on this planet. We could be living a much better life for certain things, uh, like cars. I enjoy my vehicle. It, it makes things convenient, but you have to look at not just the pros, but the cons. This is something that I also talk to, you know, uh, my children with and other people with is that Look at the pros and cons of things that we're so used to. In fact, we're so used to it, we just expect it to be there all the time in a sense having a sense of entitlement and, in a, and, and instant gratification because things are becoming more and more convenient. With the vehicle, yeah, you could go to point A to point B quicker. You could carry more things with you and everything. You could travel further in a short amount of time. All that stuff as opposed to walking or even on a horse. Cons, though, so much pollution, air pollution. How vehicle, the conventional vehicle now, all these fluids that are in the vehicle, that are produced for the vehicle, uh, coolants, oils, fluents, all types of things that are not really biodegradable. So when the car is done, where are these things going to go? Most of these things aren't even recycled or recycled properly. So it goes into the environment, abusing the environment. We also have how the car, the actual physical structure of the car, that'll break down junkyards full of cars. That's just bleeding into the ground. You know, call it just more space. These cars can't really break down that way unless you probably, you know, put them in a, in a volcano or something or shoot them into a distant star somewhere, you know, where it's not our, our issue that much anymore. But these are things we have to look at as well. These things are controllable based on a level of humility and responsibility. Dominion. It always goes back to dominion. So these things here are the top fears for Americans are definitely controllable in the Western culture. And the unfortunate part is the socioeconomic cause, culture and structure that we're in. They put forward the value of money, wealth over human life or life itself, unfortunately. High medical bills. This is something that shouldn't even be an issue, especially for people who get taxed. You know, we get taxed before. We get our money on it and then our, our, ha our hands on our money. And then we get taxed for all the other services that we pay for electricity, gas, cell phone bills, food, clothes, whatever, you know, your property. So we get taxed up front and on the back end. So those money that we are putting into everything, we should have better services, to be honest. You know, that's. Of course, uh, another argument, pretty sure there's some think tanks that will disagree with me, people that will definitely agree with me. But, you know, so much money going out of all of our, our pockets that we're producing, we shouldn't even have a thing called high medical bills, you know. But, okay, enough of the statistics. Going forward, you know, with fear. Um, well, so what I should have started off with, the definition of fear. <laughs> fear. An unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. Fear assessment of fear. Now, the thing is, I'm going to go forward. Um, you understand everything. This world is about order. This is why things break down, because we don't follow the order of this world, of this earth, of this existence. This order came from a creator. 
Elohim, who many people call God. He did instill fear in us because fear, again, you feel that something is going to be a danger to you or a threat, and it brings you to the point of, of emotional distress where you would react in an abnormal way. You will react in a manner that is not really conducive to you progressing. What fear would do, it will hijack your ability to move forward and to progress. That's what fear does. We weren't initially made with fear. This is why it's a detrimental thing. It goes against the laws of success, against the laws for everything and everyone to thrive. We don't want to survive. Surviving is just getting by. You need to get to a point where you're thriving. Because surviving is like bare minimal resources needed within you and from the outside just to make it to the next day or moment. Thriving is you're good. You're in a healthy state of being physically, mentally, spiritually, economically, and communally. Everyone is doing good. Not just a few people. Everyone is doing good when we thrive. That's when we all follow the laws that are put in place to make this world work. Even though it is a very hostile place, it can still happen. It's made to thrive. You are made to thrive. Fear will hijack that. It will hold you back. It will inhibit you and everything around you from growing properly. If anything, you will be detrimental. You're not going to be an asset. You will be a liability because of fear. Fear will cause you to hold back the greatness that you have that's already been put inside of you. This is a... We all know it. We all know it. We've experienced it ourselves. So we can all definitely relate. We all definitely have the capacity to understand what's going on with other people when they do have fear. And some fears, again, are self-imposed. Not even from an external source. It's just us having or lacking the ability to control or manage that feeling we have to go forward. Now, fear and caution aren't the same. You can be overly cautious, but caution is just using the logical stance and the tactic to make sure you have a, a calculated risk, basically. So you will go forward, but you're wary because you know, okay, if I spend too much time uh, or too much resources going forward, doing a certain thing, or going with a certain person, or going to a certain place, you know, mm, it's going to be detrimental. I may lose money, may get harmed, may lose my life. You know, you weigh, you weigh the risks. It's different to being cautious, but actually being wise. Fear is when you just allow things to control you to the point where you don't even want to go forward. Now, going forward with fear, and we are not created with fear, with the Creator, from the Creator. There's a saying in the book, have a fear of God. Now, that fear is not translated the way that we think of fear now. It's having a healthy respect. So, with the Creator involved, He doesn't expect you to be cowering under your bed, hiding from Him. Have a respect of him, a certain healthy fear of gravity, you know, a healthy respect for it. So many people may argue that, no, he's not trying to make you fearful of him, respectful to a point where you have a certain level of reverence, where you would easily know, I'm not going to jump off a building that's like 20 stories up, unless you have a parachute, zip line, bungee cord or whatever, because you have a healthy respect of the laws of gravity. You know what's going to happen. You know, so, yes, we weren't made with fear. But how the world is, it's a fractured world. Many people don't move the way they're supposed to move. The world is not conducive uh, in certain cases for us to all be healthy, but that's a result of how things are broken. But we have to know how to manage those things. We can't afford to have things hold us back and hijack us. What I'm doing now, public speaking, even though I'm recording it and 
my words, this video is going out to people right now. You're listening to me. You're seeing me right now. I've been in a position where professionally I had a talk in front of hundreds of people because it was my profession to do so. Um, I used to be, uh, well, I'm in IT, used to hold a certain position, especially with uh, security, inform information security, uh, cybersecurity. And I had to give presentations. We had briefings that we had to give. And at least two to three times, or at least over 200, maybe 300 people, I had to make a presentation. Um, I can't say if I had a fear, but you want to feel nervousness because you don't want to look stupid. You don't want to stumble over your words. You don't want to go up there not knowing the criteria you're going to cover. Because when you're talking in front of people, you have an audience. You have an audience. They are giving you and dedicating their time and their attention towards you. So you better know what you're talking about and you better be engaging as well. Because you could know exactly what you're talking about. But if you're not engaging, you're not going to, whatever message you're going to convey is not going to come across. So we had a gauntlet of people in different uh, professions talking about whatever it is that was pertaining to their job title. What I didn't want to do was do what everyone else was doing. I saw a need that was there because I understood that. By the time I get up there, these guys and women, their eyes are dried out. They're sitting for possibly hours at a time. They're probably tired. They're probably not even going to intake any more information because of the wall, because of how the preceding um, presentations were. So even though I was nervous, I did know my stuff, but I also knew my audience. And I knew that they needed to be charged to understand what I'm saying. They need to be engaged in a certain way. See, when you really know yourself or you see that there's a need for something that can easily overcome any kind of possible fears that will be there. Because some people you figure would be perfect for doing something. But if they don't see that within them, they may have a fear to go forward. There are many people who are frightened of themselves, of letting themselves go. And fear will hijack you from not being you. So whatever you have to put out there in the world, whatever you have to put out there in the world won't get out. It won't get out. We're not going to get the best you because you're scared. You're not going to experience proper happiness because you can't grow properly. You can't grow because you're scared to go forward. You got to go forward to grow. You're not going to go for, you're not going to take that step out because you fear of the unknown or possibly any potential disasters you may think is going to happen. You can't let that. If anything, you can let that energize you, understand it may grip you, but you know what? You go forward and use that as a catalyst somehow because you can, you can flip it because you also have to look at what you, you're looking at, what you're seeking to lose, what you might lose, but you have to look at what you're going to gain too. Everything that you do as a proper experience, it will give you more uh, uh, artillery to go out there and fight for yourself, man. What you need to do is always look at what you can gain. When I was younger, I should have known that I like to talk. I like to talk. When I was in high school, I'll never forget. I had a teacher. He gave us an assignment, a whole class an assignment, to look at current affairs, uh, study up on it. doesn't have to be long, pretty short. And you're going to come up in class the next day and discuss it. Um, I discussed it. I forgot what it, what it was exactly. Um, but I didn't know I had that much vigor behind it. I just wanted to study it, convey my message properly, sit down and, and pass. And I remember seeing a girl from my class, uh, maybe sometime later on that week. Uh, and they, they say, Hey, it's the preacher. I guess it's because of how I talked. Um, 
I was nervous, of course, with talking in front of everybody. It's a classroom. You know, these are your peers in high school, especially high school. You're going to feel more peer pressure and stuff around that time. But anyways, I'm like, I had a little fear, but I did it. I did it. And I didn't realize it because I saw a need to convey this message here. I didn't even realize how I sounded. I didn't have a preconceived notion of how I'm going to look. I'm going to have a certain look. And I don't even know. I just want to get up there and convey it. Let's do it. Just go ahead and do it. If you know yourself properly, you have value in yourself. You're going to have a little bit of fear, a little bit of concern, maybe some hesitation. But man, listen, you got to get past that. You got to get past that. You were made from so much more than an animal or a person or a situation to hold you back. You have things that you owe the rest of us. You have to look at the situation and you have to manage that. Now, if you have a fear of heights, I can understand that, you know, because you don't want to fall. That's cool. That's a concern. That's a concern, but don't let it grip you to the point where you can't even function anymore, where your mind shuts down, your body shuts down, your logic shuts down. You can't allow fear to take you away from you. You can't allow fear to hold you back, to hold you hostage. There's so much things that people can be afraid of, but there's a lot of things for us to gain. There's so much ways for us to grow. There's so much things for us to do for ourselves and for each other. You know, we, we owe it to ourselves and in each other to be the best version of ourselves. Again, I'm always going to speak on experience. I'm going to speak on things that relate to you. I'm going to speak on things that I've gone through myself. There are many other things that I was scared of, but I did it. I felt a, a desire to get past that fear. Performing on stage when I was, you know, way younger in, in different different environments. I just wanted to do it. Just, you know, got to do it. Got to do it. You know, some things, you know, you may not need to do, but, you know, it, it gives you the best version of life. When you get past fear, you could probably understand that it's like my last podcast. You will miss opportunities because of fear. Now, every single opportunity is not meant for you to take advantage of because some maybe a waste of time could be detrimental to you one way or another. But, you know, you know you. You're going to know what you want, what you need, what you're going to go after. Fear will keep you hostage. And this thing here. Fear is going to uh, ruin you. We can't allow fear to ruin us. We will miss opportunities. We will miss an opportunity to grow and go. Go and do wonderful things. Try your best to be brave. If not, you know, look to someone around you for encouragement. Look for other people that's out there doing what you may want to do, or even as regular things. You can't allow fear to hold you back, to keep you just going to your job, nine to five job and not investing in yourself. Go to school if you want to go to school. Go do that venture that you want to do. Look to open your business if you want to. Go on that trip that you need to go to. You need to get out there and do things and expand yourself, whatever it is. You want to ask for a promotion? Go for that promotion. You want to switch up your career? Switch up your career. You have to go do it. You have to go get it. Other people are getting it. Someone else could probably get what's meant for you. Look at it like that. You can't allow fear to even be a factor in your life. Go forward and do it. If you need help, you could always email me at quarry at brooklynbaritone.com or leave me a comment on, on the YouTube section or Facebook or Instagram. Or my website. You know, we all need encouragement at times. There's times we feel low. There's times we feel we don't feel strong enough, but we could do it. It's in you. Don't let fear lock you up. There's enough things out there to be concerned about. We all need to be concerned about ourselves. Anyways. It's about the half hour mark. Went a little bit longer than I wanted to. If you dealt with this marathon of a podcast for me anyways i try to keep it on the 30 minutes thank you for hanging out stick with me you will hear from me next week on another podcast uh, i want you all to be blessed understand that you are loved be the best you out there everybody take care